the good times were here again. Prohibition was over, the bars were full, and America was brewing. The number of breweries grew rapidly after the repeal, and with so many back to work, it really seemed like the good times were here to stay. September 1st, 1939. Germany invades Poland. Two days later, Britain and France declare war. Over the next two years, Hitler's army attacks Denmark, Norway, Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, and France. On December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor is attacked by the Japanese. The next day, America and Britain declare war. The world is now at war. When a country goes to war, it's not just the soldiers that go. The rest of the country goes to war too. War means resources will be limited, the workforce diminishes, and some of the everyday things we take for granted are going to change. Rationing, recycling, and learning how to stretch the barest of essentials was asked of every American. And while each household had to deal with change in its own way, the beer industry too was going to have to adapt to doing things differently. Massive advances in automation, refrigeration, and transportation had already made a huge impact since the return of breweries after Prohibition. These advances meant more beer could be both produced and sent further and faster. The biggest change to beer was the beer itself. But because you were limited on how much you could make uh, uh, by your grain purchases, so we could only make so much beer. That's when beer started to get a lot lighter. Brewers, to stretch it out, they could buy a thousand pounds of grain. You, you, out of a thousand pounds, you might have made 500 barrels. Well, they made six and 700 barrels out of it. And that's when beer started to get much lighter than it used to be. The First World War had been a dry war for American troops. But now all of that was about to change as well, as American breweries were conscripted to send 15% of their beer to the boys overseas. For many of these young men, the beers they drank in the camps was the first beer they ever had. Unlike the regional beers they could find in their neighborhood pubs, like Stoney's, Rolling Rock, or Duquesne Pilsner, this was very likely the first time anyone brought any of these young men a nationally branded beer. Getting the soldiers beer was a task in itself. British soldiers sent beer via airplane, hiding the beer in plain sight. American breweries were required to print cans with olive drab labels. No reflective materials. Nothing that could attract a sniper. One of the biggest changes to beer during World War II was how it was represented and advertised. Gone were the days when one might have held up a pint in a beer hall and reminisced about the old country. Beer was now an American drink, and the advertising didn't hold back. When the war ended and the young men returned home, the beer that had been there for them in the camps and in the field was waiting for them again. The idea of grilling burgers and hot dogs while enjoying a bottle of cold, clear, smooth beer was about to become the American dream. As families moved out of urban areas and into the growing suburbs, the way we bought food and other necessities started to change as well. The days of getting your beer exclusively at the pub were slowly replaced by picking up a six-pack at the grocery. The brands that could produce the most beer with the widest spread of distribution quickly became the beers found in most refrigerators. Other foods that were products of World War II, enriched white bread, TV dinners, and even Spam became more common in kitchens and living rooms across the country. The beers that were the favorites of the soldiers of World War II continued to be the beer America was drinking. The brands became household names, the advertisements became a staple in sports programming, and their logos became synonymous with products made in America. The changes made to beer during World War II continued for almost 50 years until the advent of craft beer in the late 1980s. The modern craft beer movement seeks to reclaim the idea of the small neighborhood-centered brewery. And although the beers we drink today are becoming indistinguishable from what the soldiers were drinking, the happiness and camaraderie that comes from sharing your favorite beer and toasting to our victories will never go away.